Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to one of my newest videos here where we'll be discussing the upcoming DLC for Total Warhammer 3. This DLC list is going to be very speculative, and also it's going to be about the near future and also the far future. So let's go ahead and get on to this. But actually, before we begin, I'm going to let you guys know a little bit about myself. My name is Disparity, variety content creator here on YouTube. I've played a lot of RTS games, a lot of turn based strategy games with hints of RPGs and just variety in general. Let's go ahead and head on in. Okay, so the first faction that we have on this list is the Chaos Dwarves. Chaos Dwarves have been hinted to us many, many times throughout uh, Total Warhammer, Warhammer 3's life cycle or lifespan so far. And so they've given by either in-game hints, data mining, or in-game features. Now, as we all know, the, the Chaos Dwarves are situated within the Dark Lord. That's where they do their evil Chaos Dwarves, you know, deeds or whatnot, correct? So they're a faction that looks really interesting, and especially when looking at their units and what they could possibly bring to the table. So I can give you guys a quick description of what looks like well, what we could see. They have, of course, Chaos Dwarf Warriors, the Chaos Dwarf Blunderbuss, which looks like units aren't with uh, you know, heavy Blunderbuss. They have an Infernal Guard, Hobble Goblin Cutthroats, Infernal Irons uh, Sworn, Orc Slaves, Black Orcs, Goblin Slaves. So keep in mind, by the way, with the Black Orcs, the Black Orcs actually rebelled against the Chaos Wars to gain their independence. So that's a little bit quick uh, lore there, which is really cool. They have Calvary or Chaos Dwarf Calvary, which is Hobgoblin Wolf Riders or Bull Centaur's Renderer. They have Chaos Dwarf Monsters, which is Kaldal Fireborn, Lamatsu, the Great Saurus, Kaldal Destroyer. They got a Chaos Siege Giant, and they're, they have a Chaos Dwarf uh, War Machines as well. So they have the Hell Cannon, Dreadquake Border, Death Striker Rocket Launcher, Iron Demon or Daemon War Machine, Magma Cannon. They're Dwarf Lords or Chaos Dwarf Lords. If they have a natural Chaos Dwarf Lord or Sorcerer slash Prophet. They have a couple heroes, by the way. They have Hoblin Khan, Bull Centaur Torok, Demon Smith, and Fredo Castilian. So that's pretty cool that uh you can see like you can see how the Chaos Dwarves differentiate themselves from the dwarves, especially when uh now we don't have mobility, but Chaos Dwarves do. And you know, also Chaos Dwarves have the advantage of using demon based weaponry or monsters so, so that's really cool so let's go ahead and head on to this next one here now the next section that i believe that is secretly coming is going to be arabi now keep this in mind arabi as a faction and concept is really cool but it's such a rare or kind of weird oddity because of the simple fact that the middle eastern or countries or folklore and it's it's probably i want to say like a very touchy faction to create Especially when, you know, a lot of things, especially in today's society, you know, people are very uh, sensitive or whatnot. But besides the point there, there could be a possibility of us seeing them because they already have their army set from, I believe, Battle Series, if I recall, Warhammer Battle Series. So maybe we might be able to see them come through from a CA uh, employee or in the Discord, if I recall, that they were not you know, creating Arabia or bringing it out of Arabia. But they said the same thing about Cat Day, so you, you just don't know. But also, Gang's Workshop here is starting to work up the production of Warhammer and giving, you know, more notoriety to the fantasy series. So, hopefully, we can see them come by. Because they're, honestly, their unit set just looks cool and amazing. And I can see a brand new Winds of Magic coming through, which is Sand Magic. You know, that would be freaking amazing and cool to see, you know. And they already have, like, what, I think, what do you call it, two spots already that they can come through in, which is, uh... If I recall the campaign map, it's one of the battle camps where there's like two ogres, or it's like an ogre settlement there that I see that I can see that happening. But you know, we'll have to wait and see. But uh Arabia's army here here looks to be really cool. And I'm gonna tell you guys here what they look like right now. Starting out with the Arabian infantry, we have the Arabian spearmen, we have Arabian guards, Arabian bowmen, dervishers, mamluks, and eunuchs. Going with the Arabian cavalry, we have Arabian knights, really cool, I like that. Arabian desert riders, Arabian camel riders, Arabian flying carpets. So they get their like they get their own little doom, you know, we call doom knights unit, you know, pretty cool, right? Ara they have Arabian war beasts, which is just an elephant. Elephants are crazy. I mean, you already have the model in there for the mammoth, so you know you can just turn that into, you know, an elephant, easy. You have Arabian heroes, which is are the Arabian magicians and champions. And last but not least, the Arabian Lords. You have the, just the Arabian Commanders. Now, there is some notable characters that they could choose from Arabia, which they have, I'm going to name just a couple. They have Abdul bin Rashad, or Rashid. 
Al Mukhtar, Patandira, Gota Magas, Evan Jalaba. So let's just name you guys a few of the lords there. So let's go ahead and head on into the next. So the next one that we're definitely going to be be seeing in Total War History is definitely Kingdoms of End. Now, Kingdoms of End has their continent landmass there, but it's inhabited right now. So, which means that in the near future, CA is probably currently working on it or play testing as we speak. But in order to uh, you know kind of get a feel of what they're going to be like for you know later down the line, at least in the early production of it. Now, Kingdoms of End is south of Cathay. They, from lore wise, supposedly have tiger like people and human population. So it's really cool to see that come to life. And I can definitely see Kingdoms of the End becoming a pretty cool faction to deal with. Now, the only thing about it is that they don't have an army that I don't know of. And so CA will have to get a, you know, create an army just like how they did for Norska. I could definitely see them, you know, seeing it happen, honestly. Let's just hope that Kingdoms of the End makes it on in. I mean, I guarantee it because they learn, they're just their landmasses there. So let's go on to the next one. So another faction that could be a possibility similar to the Kingdoms of End is Koresh. Now, not little is known about Koresh other than the fact that Koreshians or just the people of Koresh are snake people or snake-like people. And so I think that's a really cool aspect that they could definitely bring into the Total War fandom. But also keep in mind that Koresh doesn't technically have an army book yet. What C will have to do is that they'll have to build their entire army, uh, once again, just like Kingdom Zen, from scratch. And so all we can do is just kind of wait and just see what CA can do. Now, I will say this. In the Total War, what, not Total War, I'm sorry. In the in the Blood Bowl series, there are or is a faction of Stakeman or Koresh. So that's pretty cool, and I'm glad to see it you know, there. But let's go ahead and head on to the next one. So this next group of factions that I'm going to be speaking about, which I'm actually really surprised that they haven't added them into the game series yet, which is the Southern Realms. So Southern Realms seems like a huge potential to be added to the game, but also could be a huge potential not to be added. So with the Southern Realms, the Southern Realms consists of Border Princes, Estelia, Telia. Those are the main factions of the, the, the um, Southern Realms. So they were all introduced within the Old World or the first Warhammer game. And then later... We had the New World Colony, Sutenberg, and Pirates of Sartosa, which were introduced. But Pirates of Sartosa has been added onto the Vampire uh, Coast faction, while Sutenberg is now held by Volkmar the Grim, currently at the moment in Warhammer 3. So we could definitely see Southern Realms becoming a faction or a thing. And also, you know, their faction is very based on, let's say, uh, Renaissance era Italy. So to, in order to see them happen, like see that happen, that would be amazing because you could see, you know, let's say maybe. Crossbowmen, you know, good, uh, more focus on them, you know, on range, on range battles, you know, you can see just more different types of like architectural buildings in their settlements. So I can see like there's a lot of potential of the Southern Realms being added and seeing what their unit roster consists of. As of currently right now, the unit roster consists of just only Empire units, which is kind of boring, kind of bland. And so hopefully CA can just easily, you know, flip a coin and then add them on into the game here. And I'm pretty excited to see. A fresh new take on what's below the empire basically so let's go ahead to the last one so these last two i'm basically gonna go ahead and hit them up at the same time so first we're gonna go off with the pawn so there's not very much known about the pawn other than that it is a japanese-esque type of faction and that these this faction has a let's say like samurai you or samurai culture well, samurai monsters and also Japanese mythology. So, but that is as much as we know about the pawn. Other than that, they're just an isolationist kind of faction. So, seeing the pawn joining in and just being a small part added to the game would be pretty cool. I mean, CA has done it before where they added in just small pieces, like, um, well, small pieces on the map, basically. And so, it's not just a little bit over to, you know, on the what do you call eastern border. So, just small space. And we're also going to be talking about here. The most famous faction that everyone wants, which is Dogs of War. So Dogs of War is a mercenary group or faction. What my understanding is, is that they get units from basically from any faction they need from, whether it's from, you know, the Empire, Ogres, Dwarves, Norse Marauders, Paymasters Ground, Halflings. So I'm like, that's actually kind of cool how you get a, a, a human faction that, you know, doesn't have any affiliation with Chaos or whatnot. But then again, it feels like a weird version of the chaos or champions of chaos, you know, units or just a new chaos units in, in general. But we have to wait and see. Like, I wonder how if 
they do end up doing dogs where how they would do a mercenary kind of function where would they tell you to go attack this place for it, you know said faction go attack that place you know it would it be like kind of like the pope where the pope from medieval two is like hey y'all need you guys to go do, get this go get more favor you know and you'll get more favor for per faction and so on and so forth but you know this will many ways that they can actually go ahead and try to incorporate dogs work into the game so we just have to wait and see on what the future will hold for this so if you guys have any comment below on the list of future dlc coming to warhammer 3 definitely comment down below that will be very much appreciated and thank you guys for taking the time watching this video if you guys enjoyed this video please remember to like and subscribe also hit the notification bell down below to be notified when the next video is coming out and last but not least if you want to subscribe to me definitely consider subscribing for on my patreon for two dollars a month but uh thank you guys for watching peace out much love everybody have a good one y'all If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also hit the bell notification down below. Thanks for watching.